Today's webinar is on Minnesota child support. And so what you are seeing right now is family law software in the cloud. This is our 100% web-based platform. If you are using the desktop version, it's going to look and feel very familiar. It's going to have all of the same tools generally in the same location. The main benefit of using the cloud is you don't have to worry about updates. So if you'd like to upgrade at any time, please let us know. And so what I have open now is our child support section in the cloud under the enter data section. And what I have done is in settings, I have opened up a sample file. So if you were using the cloud or the desktop version and you were to open the sample file, you would see the exact same data that I'm looking at. So for today's presentation, I've preloaded that uh, to make data entry a little quicker so we can really dive into the worksheets. By default in family law software, our first calculator is called Quick. So if you start a case and you go into child support, we're going to bring you into Quick. And this data is already loaded for me because it's a sample file, or if you've already worked on an affidavit through the affidavit sections, when you come to your child support calculator in quick or complete, you'll already see that there's been data entered because they share information from the same bank. So the income sources and the possible deductions or reductions in income for child support purposes. So if you come to the quick screen, you should be able to do a lot of cases here. It's intended for most simple cases and for consultations. So we have that note at the top. And so what this screen has is children. So I can add as many children necessary for the calculation, the income of both parties on a side-by-side -side basis, health insurance and childcare, and then spousal maintenance. Child support is going to be a live number at the top. So in this case, I'm going to delete the current spousal maintenance and you'll instantly see the effect on child support at the top. So that's the beauty of family law software is the calculation is lightning speed. I'm going to scroll back up. And if you're ever on this quick calculator and you think, wait a minute, where do I enter this source of income? How do I factor in this deduction or this worksheet? All you have to do is switch to complete. And by switching to the complete calculator, you're going to notice that the child support number at the top stays the same. But now when we're in the complete worksheet, you'll instantly notice a few things. Here in Minnesota, anytime there's something new in your state or federal taxation laws, which is going to be the spousal options here, spousal. So all of these are going to be your defaults. You can uncheck these boxes. And if you didn't know that anything changed in your state, you can just check this bubble here and it'll let you know what the updates are. So in this case, if I click on this bubble, we have an explanation about the changes that were made this year in your state. And so the main changes are all going to be listed here, uh, which is basically increases to the minimum basic child support obligations. If for whatever reason your case is older, you can click this and then see instantly how it impacts your case. But for now, we'll use the current law. Now we're gonna open up the children's section again. So what you're gonna notice in the complete is that you work your way through folders. You do not have to go in order, you can jump around. And so we will go in order. And I suggest that new users also do this just so that you can get the hang of the program. And so here again, in the sample file, I have Kim and Reese. I have their date of birth and here are the overnights. So what you're going to notice is that if I change the overnights, so in this case, we will put 365 in Blake's column and then instantly the time sharing for Taylor will update and it will have a direct re relationship, excuse me, with the final child support result. Something that you're going to notice is that we have the blue bubble here and it goes into overnights. And so what we're trying to explain in this paragraph is about how overnights impact your child support number, but also about taxes. So 
you're going to see throughout family law software, I'm gonna bring the majority of time sharing back over to Taylor. What you're going to notice is whoever is, has the children for the most overnights, their names are going to be listed in these boxes. And so by default, whoever has the children the most is going to be considered the custodial parent, and they will also claim any tax benefits related to the children. These are going to be drop downs. And so for federal taxes, Blake might be claiming this child for the child tax credit and other available credits. And you can click this blue bubble to learn more about that. In your state, this does not affect your child support number. So why do we ask for it? On this screen, you're going to notice that there's going to be many data points that will not impact your child support number directly. But the purpose of those data entry points are so that the program in the background can calculate the available net income that both of the parties have. And so that will be important for spousal maintenance. And it's also just important to find out the health of the parties post-dissolution or after child support is awarded. And so anytime that you see a data field that does not have a direct correlation with child support, we still have it on this screen because it is related to the children. And so therefore that's why it's going to be a part of the data entry here. Every time that you add a child, these boxes are going to be checked. Eligible, meaning the child is eligible for child support, and so the date of birth could exclude them from eligibility of child support, they've aged out. And the other box that's automatically going to be checked is what we call child of this relationship. The program assumes that every child in the program is of the relationship of Taylor and Blake. So let's say that this child, Reese, is only the child of Taylor, the child from outside of the relationship. How would I make adjustments. First, you would uncheck this box and you instantly see the effect on child support and you see that the time sharing numbers go away. The second box that you have to consider for this child, Reese, we know that Reese is the child of Taylor because of these boxes. But the second question that the program has is this, and each child has this. Check if this is not a child of the relationship, which we've already marked here, and I feel like this should be in bold, and there's no court ordered child support obligation for this child. So again, I've unchecked this box. And then if I check this box, you're going to notice an effect on child support. Why? If I click the blue bubble, it will explain how that's affecting the basic child support obligation. And it specifically tells you what line we're going to see this impact on for the child support worksheet. And so why don't we go look at the worksheet? So the entire time that you're entering data, we are updating the final printout of the child support guideline. In this particular box, let's go see how this affects the printout. It's here, 2A. And so now I've got one child uh, that's a non-joint child without a child support order. And so if you ever feel, am I doing this right? Am I putting the numbers in the right places? You can print print guideline at any time and you can see how everything is filled in blue. All of these numbers are calculations that the program is constantly doing. So as you enter income, 1A is going to update. If you come to this worksheet and you forgot a number, or you put in an extra zero, do not make changes on the print preview, just go back into print guideline. And when you come back to this worksheet, it'll be fully updated. So uh, 2A is what is going to affect those checkboxes. So let's go back to our calculator. And let me just scroll up. So we're back with our children, Kim and Reese. If you need to add more children that only belong to Taylor or only belong to Blake, you would just click add child and you would go through the exact same process. I would click add child. And then I would uncheck this box and then last consider if there is or is not a child support order for that child. If you added too many children, just click delete. So this red box is going to delete. It asks me if I'm sure and I am. All right, the first worksheet. So we went and we looked at the print for the child support here. You can see that there's an extra worksheet here, parenting worksheet. If I click that here, it takes us to the parenting worksheet that essentially shows 
the effect of overnights. And so you can see our overnights are carrying over and this is not going to automatically attach to your final printout. If you want to print this separate worksheet, which is kind of showing the math, you would just click PDF at the top. I'm going back to the calculator. So that was where that parenting worksheet is. We're partnering with Custody Exchange. So if you use them for parenting plans or for calendars, uh, you can import information from that program. So if that caught your eye, that is what that is. Let's talk about money, which is in the next folder. Let me scroll back up. On a side-by-side -side basis, we're going to have Taylor and Blake. This income is annual right now, but the gross wages from a pay stub, they might get paid weekly, monthly, et cetera. So whatever the pay period is that you receive, so let's say that Taylor is paid $5,000 a week, I would just use this dropdown and we will update the worksheets accordingly. So however you receive the information is how you're going to pop it into the program. If Taylor is an hourly worker, we have an hourly tool built into the program and I can check this box. If I check this box and you're using cloud family law software, you're going to see what the current minimum wage is. And so it populates here. And we calculate that income on a weekly basis. If you're using the desktop version, this is one of the reasons to use the cloud because you wouldn't have to update if there's any changes in the minimum wage laws. So if Taylor is paid hourly, but makes more than minimum wage, I could update this amount. I would still check this box, but then I could make adjustments. So let's say that she's a contractor and Taylor is paid $25 an hour. I would click the hourly tool and then you can make adjustments to the pay period or the pay amounts. Other options are going to be tax issues. And so this question is asking, is Taylor or Blake self-employed? If Taylor is a contractor and is a 1099, I would check this box. Taylor's fully subject to the self-employment tax. Again, you're not going to notice a difference in your child support number, but what you're going to notice is when you're doing a spousal support analysis, there's going to be more or less available income based off of these check boxes. And so they're very important to put the income on the correct line and to make sure that you are checking the boxes for those tax issues. Let's scroll down and keep talking about tax issues. Whoever has the children the most will be given the tax filing status of head of household. Again, this is all about available income. And so when I look at Blake, Blake will be single, but Blake might be married. Blake might qualify for head of household uh, based off of other dependents within their household. So I can make those elections here. Earn income tax credit, again, for low income parties, the earned income tax credit can supplement their income and you're going to see those election boxes as well. Let's scroll down to the next wage folder, which is wage like income. And here, I apologize for the scrolling. It's the size of my screen. So on wage like income, these are going to be other sources of income that may or may not appear on a pay stub. If they have a direct effect on child support, you'll see this number change. And so what do I mean by that? So here, let's say that Taylor receives child support for another child, not of the relationship. I pop that in here. I see no effect on child support. But if I pop in maintenance that she receives from the previous relationship, we will see that there is a slight effect on the child support awarded in this current case. The other box that you're going to see is the taxable versus non-taxable. So every data point is going to have that option available. If you ever have any questions about the effects or no effect at all, just click the blue bubble and we'll explain what we are doing behind the scenes. Let's scroll down. These are other common sources of income or income that you wanna describe separately that you may or may want, not want to factor into the calculation. And then last, we have potential income and SSDI. So potential income is going to have a special line on your final printout. So if you want to factor in potential income or um, your fact finder has found that they have the potential to make a certain level of income, this is where it's going to go. And you wanna make sure it goes here because then it will go on the appropriate line when you print. Last, 
SSDI. So if the child receives a social security check because of their parent's retirement or disability, this is the section that it's going to go. We have four boxes. So I always tell users slow down and just take a look at the text. So let's say in this scenario that Blake is disabled and the child or children are receiving a social security derivative benefit. The next question is who is receiving that payment? So usually what's going to happen is the, the parent that has the children is going to receive that check. And so whoever receives the SSDI check, that's going to be the column that we first start. So we'll assume Blake is disabled, but Taylor receives the check. The money is going to go here and it's specifically going to go in this box. So if I put the social, social security derivative check in this box, the program knows that this is a part of Blake's income, but that Blake will also receive a credit against his child support because of that check. So you wanna make sure you know what the amount is, you know who's disabled, and you know who's receiving the check. So there's going to be multiple prongs that are going into this. The income worksheet. So we've entered a ton of income. So before we start getting into deductions or expenses, we can go click this income worksheet here. This is a great exhibit. If you want to attach this, you would just click PDF and using your PDF editor, attach it to your worksheets or as a separate exhibit. And this is going to break down the income sources. So every line is going to have the breakdown versus if I were just to print, everything would be lumped together on one line. So this is a really great exhibit so that you can show uh, where your number on 1A of the worksheet is coming from. I'm going to use the back button in my browser. And so that was the income worksheet. We've got a couple more folders to go over. Let's click deductions. Let me scroll back up. Health is going to be the big one. And so the default way of entering health insurance is going to be to enter the numbers here. The family law software has other options. So number one, I can do the default, which is enter the health insurance information here. And then these are going to be the tax categories of that health insurance. We assume that it is from a pay stub, but this is a drop down. So if you're a financial professional on this webinar, uh, this, uh, this is definitely going to be of interest. If not, the default is usually from a pay stub deduction. Other ways of entering health insurance are going to be located here. So if you don't wanna do a direct enter, click health insurance worksheet here. And these are the other options that we have. So number one, you can prorate. Number two is enter the expenses directly. So this is going to match the main data screen. If they have public coverage, then you would come here and click this option and we'll do the calculation here. But by default, when you come to this worksheet, you're going to see that this is the option that's going to be checked. And this is going to match, I'm gonna click back, this is going to match that section. Last is gonna be childcare out of pocket or through the child assistance program. And there's going to be a matching worksheet that you can click just like for health insurance. Spousal support and child support that is being paid leaving, that's where it's going to go versus in the income section, that would be someone who was receiving it. These are tax questions related to that maintenance. And then last is maintenance on the current case. I'm gonna leave this blank because I wanna show you some graphs uh, based off of what we know for child support. If you have older or wealthier clients, you may wanna come into this folder. So that means that they're drawing from, you know, interest, distributions, et cetera, businesses. So again, older clients, higher income clients, this might be a section where you might need to enter data. And so let's scroll all the way back up. And we did our quick, complete, and graphs. Family Law Software is making visual representations of this data. And if I click graphs at the top, it's showing the party's footing if only child support were being calculated. So this is the before and after only factoring in child support. And if I scroll down, we can look at the payer versus the recipient. So the payer of child support, 
So you can see in this particular demonstration, this is all that available income that's being impacted by those tax elections that we were clicking throughout the child support calculator. This little sliver is the current child support and these are going to be the taxes. So this is going to help in your alimony analysis. And we're gonna talk about a few more tools that family law software offers that are extremely helpful in your state. So let me go to complete and I'm going to delete uh, the SSDI. That's kind of like a weird credit. That's gonna mess up the tool that I wanna show you in a moment. So you've gone through quick complete, you looked and you've printed this number. Family Law Software has other tools and they're located under analysis. The most popular tool is going to be side-by-side -side child support. What do I mean by that? So this is the number that we have calculated using our child support calculator. This number is going to follow me and all of this data is following into the analysis tabs. So this is the area where that you would play around with maintenance and maintenance alternatives. But the first tool that I want users to really dive into is this one. We call this what if child support, child support what if. And so if you come to this screen and you've never used this tool before, you wouldn't see these columns. So I'm gonna remove them. So this was the child support that followed us from the calculator, so 1069. And so anything that affects the child support calculation is going to be listed here and I can click add scenario. Why would I wanna do that? Maybe I want to play around with maintenance. So let's say in this case, zero, but in this case, I'm gonna put $1,000 of alimony and I instantly see the effect on child support. And so this screen can be used for different levels of spousal support, or I could add another scenario and factor in anything in this column and I can put a note at the top. So this was like, this was with alimony at a thousand, let's put 1K. But then in this column, maybe I wanna play with overnights or some other factor. So this is a really great way to prepare your client for the different scenarios and you can click PDF and it turns it into an exhibit. Let's go back to and our data and our child support. And so that number is following us around from the analysis tools. And let's go and click print. This is going to be your child support guideline worksheet. Again, we talked about how everything is in blue. And if you need to make changes, go back to the calculator. There are going to be a few worksheets that you can access from the calculator, but the income worksheet, for instance, was only available after the end of income data entry. And so this is going to be the entire worksheet filled in for you. If I scroll at the top, we have a few more worksheets. So we've got the parenting worksheet that we talked about that's after the children's section, the childcare worksheet, and then last, this case header, you can see it's all in blue. And if I need to pop in all of my header information, that's where it would go, would be here. And then anytime that you need to print your worksheet, you just click PDF and you are done. Thank you for joining me for this webinar on Minnesota Child Support. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. The email is support at familylawsoftware.com. We thank you for being subscribers and for spending some time with us today. We'll go over the Q&A section if there's any, and if not, y'all have a really great day. Thank you.